ready to go. The government in Australia has changed, but this was an opportunity to tell our Quad partners, the United States, Japan and India, that, Labor, that the government's commitment uh, to the Quad has not changed. The United States is our most important ally, and we have close relations with Japan and with India. And I must say I was very touched by the warm welcome and the congratulations that I received from Prime Minister Kishida, our host, from Prime Minister Modi and from President Biden, who I'd met before when he was Vice President of the United States. Uh, the Quad plays an important role. The Quad is important in terms of our economic relationship, but also on what unites us our democratic values, which are shared, our position, which is support for the rule of law, for making sure that the values on which Australia's nation is built, which we share with these other great democracies. So there's a real opportunity for Australia to send a message to the world uh, that the government has changed. Uh, our values haven't in terms of support for democracy and engagement uh, with our important partners here at the Quad. Next year, of course, Australia will host the Quad meeting, and I look forward to welcoming uh, the Pre President Biden, Prime Minister Modi and Prime Minister Kishida to uh, Australia next year. Uh, today was also an opportunity for uh, myself as the new Australian Prime Minister to indicate Australia's changed position on climate. Uh, that has been welcomed by uh, these three nations in the Quad, uh, and they have welcomed it because it will strengthen what is an important issue in the Indo-Pacific. Uh, we know that China is seeking to exert more influence in the Pacific, and we know that climate change is such an important issue. I share the view that this is a national security issue. Climate change is not just about the environment, it is about the shape of our economies, but also our national security going forward. And I was very pleased that the changes were made uh, to the statement uh, which will be issued shortly uh, from the Quad Leaders meeting. Mr. Happy Revenue, to take questions. Prime Minister, Prime sure, Phil. Prime Minister, um, <laughs> this, while you've been here in Japan, there's been overtures from Beijing, including from Li Keqiang, the Chinese Premier, about wanting to, wanting to use your election as an opportunity to reset the relationship. Can I ask how seriously do you take these uh, these statements, and what would it take from a, you know, what would Australia demand of China um, to show they're serious, to show us that they're serious? Well, I, I have received uh, now a, uh, a a letter of congratulations from Premier Lee, as I have from other world leaders, and I welcome that. Uh, we will respond uh, a, a, appropriately in time. Uh, when, uh, when I returned to Australia. But uh, it was a, a formal letter that went through. Uh, I welcome the congratulations I've received from all over the world. Minister, on, the Solomon Islands, on the Solomon Islands, did you discuss um, in the Quad what the red line would mean and what a Quad response would be to any crossing of such a red line um, in the Solomon Islands? And sorry, just one for Penny Wong, if that's okay, or for sure. the foreign minister rather. Um, <laughs> on on supply chain, you, we spoke about supply chains and human rights. Will you have discussions with your Indian counterparts um, about pushing further to pushing further rather and calling out Russia about what's what's happening with human rights violations in the Ukraine? Okay. First, firstly, on the Solomons, uh, the Solomons was discussed uh, in the meeting. Uh, including uh, the uh, issue in which China is, is seeking to exert more influence uh, in the Pacific. Uh, we know that that's the case. Uh, Australia is responding uh, to that, along with uh, the United States, of course, have Kurt Campbell and other representatives are here who visited Honiara uh, recently. Uh, we discussed uh, the need uh, for uh, the Quad. Uh, to engage uh, more uh, in the Indo-Pacific. That was a, a general theme. How do we engage? How do we make sure uh, that uh, we push 
our shared values uh, in the region at a time when China is clearly seeking to exert more influence. So we're conscious of that, uh, and uh, we need that's one of the reasons uh, why uh, we will respond uh, with, uh, from Australia's perspective, I spoke about our Pacific plan uh, that we announced during the election, uh, during the meeting, including our, our Australia Pacific uh, defence training uh, facility, including our migration program, both permanent, specifically for people from the Pacific, but also uh, Pacific uh, temporary, our position of maritime security, and one of the things that the Quad is looking at and engaging in, in the region is the issue of uh, maritime security. The fish stocks are so important for our Pacific Island neighbours. We spoke about that. We spoke about climate change and the need for support for climate change infrastructure in the region. Uh, I spoke about our aid program and the increase over half a billion dollars in aid that we announced during the election campaign, as well as people-to-people -people links through parliamentary engagement so that the leaders of Australia can engage directly uh, with the, the leaders of the Pacific. The other issue I'll ask Penny. Just, just first on the first issue, obviously, uh, the Sol Solomon Islands and what has occurred there exemplifies the change strategic environment that is the Pacific, but it doesn't end there. Uh, and uh, as the Prime Minister said, uh, the nature of the changing environment in uh, the Pacific Island nations in the Southwest Pacific was a topic of conversation, obviously something that Australia, given our, our geography and our history, wanted to make sure was, was discussed fully and the PM did, did that. Uh, in relation to your question, I think you're referring to the modern slavery announcement, um, which we made before the election. It's a country agnostic proposition, which I think should be reasonably unremarkable, which is the countries of the world should try and stamp out modern slavery, no, so uh, and, sorry, so uh, and that. Um, sorry, can I just oh, my there are a lot. Um, in terms of supply chains and a focus on human rights. That, that is that is we what we haven't that, seen India call out well, Russia. Oh, well, uh, we we are clear about the position on um, uh, Russia. That was obviously discussed. Uh, you'll see it, a reference in the. Uh, in the um, leader statement, and I think uh, the positions of the four quad countries is Prime clear. Minister. Prime Minister. Andrew. Well, a Andrew. Uh, thanks, Prime Minister. Joe Biden said yesterday that um, should should China invade Taiwan, they would it could expect uh, military action. Uh, what is your response to that, and where do we stand at the moment, given that this seems to be? running counter to strategic uh, ambiguity on Taiwan? Well, President Biden has confirmed there's no change in the United States position, and I confirm there's no change in Australia's position. Prime Minister. Oh, okay. Just to follow up, though, the, the President did say on Sunday, confirmed that, that would, the commitment was to intervene militarily if necessary. If that was to occur, what would Australia's position be? Well, the, our position is there should be no unilateral change to the status quo. Our position has not changed. Prime Minister, the previous government uh, made several attacks, particularly leading into the campaign, in relation to your prospective ministers and China. Peter Dutton said Penny Wong would be sucked in by President Xi. Richard Miles was called the Manchurian candidate. Do you feel you've made some steps today in convincing any Australians who uh, listen to that and, and were fearful that uh, you're on the side of the US and, and not on the side of autocrats? Well, serious people didn't take those comments seriously. And what we shouldn't do when we speak about Australia's national interest is try to score cheap political domestic points by doing it, because that's not in Australia's national interest. The truth is that Australia is a great democracy. We stand for our values, which are consistent. I whenever asked, uh, must have been hundreds of times now, have said that the demands uh, which were placed uh, by China are entirely in inappropriate. We reject all of them. We'll determine our own values. We'll determine Australia's future direction. It's China that's changed, not Australia. The, the Japanese Prime Minister said that in the Indo-Pacific, we do not want to see a situation like Ukraine here. What other concerns 
inside the court in terms of what you can say publicly about that scenario potentially occurring and what are you doing? I, I know today that you're trying to broaden the quad you know, with Pacific and ASEAN and East Asian nations. How important is it to ensure that you are united? Well, there's no proposal to, to broaden the quad beyond its existing membership. Uh, what uh, the, the quad has discussed, of course, is our engagement with other important bodies, including ASEAN. Uh, that's important. President Biden hosted ASEAN uh, very recently in, in, the, in the past weeks. And that's important. Uh, so we did discuss the context of uh, our influence in, in the Indo-Pacific, and that includes the, the context here, which is uh, the Solomons and, and what has occurred there. Prime Minister, Prime Minister, Prime Minister WA rewarded you tremendously in the federal election, and, and given one in four jobs in WA depends on China, do you owe it to West Australians to fix that relationship? Well, West Australia, um, I'm not commenting on domestic uh, issues while I'm, while I'm uh, overseas, except to say that I was pleased with West Australia and we made a good decision to hold our, 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 our campaign launch there. Um, with, with regard to, well, some of you, when I said Tangney, expressed some alarm, alarm about uh, my capacity to count. Um, with regard to our relations, look, Australia seeks good relations with all countries, uh, but it's not Australia that's changed, it's China has. It's China that has placed sanctions uh, on Australia. There is no justification for doing that, and that's why they should be removed. Just, just, so just back on the Ukraine. Um, uh, the, the leaders of the United States and uh, Japan in the, in the opening remarks this morning made specific reference to the Ukraine. Uh, President Biden described it as an attack on civilisation, I think. Um, you, you didn't mention it, and neither did uh, Prime Minister mm. Modi. Um, was there a reason why you didn't mention it, and was it discussed? And, and sort of, could, you, could you elaborate on how it was discussed, if it was discussed in the Quad meeting, and where we're is there any sign of uh, unanimity on the issue? Uh, it certainly was discussed, and, and you'll see reference in, in the statement uh, uh, about it. Um, and I certainly made a contribution as part of the, uh, the debate, expressing Australia's view that the Russian uh, unilateral, illegal, immoral attack on the people of Ukraine is an outrage and uh, it is uh, the atrocities which are being committed on innocent civilians uh, is uh, something that uh, we couldn't have expected in the, the 21st century. Uh, I think people thought that that sort of activity uh, was, uh, was something of the past and uh, certainly uh, strong views were expressed uh, in the meeting as you would expect uh, consistent with Australia's position. I indicated uh, that uh, Australia has on a bipartisan basis uh, supported every one of the requests that were given, made by uh, the Ukraine including President Zelensky's uh, request for Bushmasters after he addressed the parliament. Uh, that's been something that has uh, been, uh, been bipartisan. I would think it would continue to be so, and we remain uh, open to any further suggestions of support. This is, this is something that uh, Russia must pay a price for its actions. It's as simple as that. These actions are against uh, against democratic values, against national sovereignty, against the rule of law, against the very charter of the United Nations, and they should be condemned, condemned unequivocally, and I do so again now. Prime Minister, uh, yesterday you had a conversation with Boris Johnson of the UK. In the briefing in the UK, out of that conversation, Boris Johnson, through his spokesperson, made reference to the AUKUS alliance and the discussion about broadening AUKUS and taking it into other fields. Was AUKUS discussed today in the Quad meeting, and do you support the idea of expanding AUKUS into other areas? Well, AUKUS was discussed uh, uh, by uh, the participants in AUKUS, um, uh, not centrally because this is a Quad leaders meeting, but obviously by uh, reference was given uh, by, by myself uh, to, to AUKUS as an important development. Um, the uh, discussion with Prime Minister Johnson was a very constructive one. 
It's centred around, uh, around our support for AUKUS. He thanked us uh, for uh, that support uh, which I gave as Leader of the Opposition uh, for the AUKUS arrangements. Uh, the main thing that we discussed was climate change uh, yesterday, uh, where uh, I, uh, we had quite a good discussion. It was longer than I thought it would be. It included my reference to uh, the fact that uh, Margaret Thatcher was one of the first, first world leaders uh, to come out on the science of climate change. She played an important role. In the UK, they don't have the, uh, the debate uh, that has unfortunately taken place in Australia for a long period of time and some seem determined to continue it. Uh, the truth is the science of climate change is very clear and we, need a, and we need a very clear response. He welcomed, uh, very much welcomed, the fact that uh, we will have uh, stronger action on climate change, including with a higher 2030 target. Then Chloe. Margaret Thatcher closed coal mines. Is it your intention to do the same? Would you sign the COP26 no. pledge on coal? Can you explain no. why not, given that you're making such a great deal about climate change and all of your international... No, because we have our policy. Where we will do exactly what I said we would do in terms of our, our Powering Australia plan. It's all out there. It's fully costed. It's ready to go. It will make a big difference. What did your fellow quad leaders have to say today about your predecessor's stance on climate action and the handling of the former government in regards to the Solomon Islands? Uh, I don't intend to politicise this press conference while overseas or make, uh, make any criticism of the former government. Just, just over here. You've had the briefing now, Mr Albanese, and you've been to this meeting. The, the, We're the about to have the bilateral, so I'm not going to keep that President well. Biden waiting. So this will be the last question. So in, term, in terms of the, the concern raised by your predecessors about the threat of war in the region, what's your view on that now that you've had these high-level briefings? Look, our position is very clear. We want peace and stability in the region. Uh, that's best achieved uh, through proper diplomatic processes by making sure we build relations in the region and act in a positive way. One of the great things about the Quad is that that is what it is about. And today, of course, we also had uh, well, not today, yesterday, we signed up to the, the Indo-Pacific uh, economic framework. It has 13 countries, of which uh, eight of Australia's top 10 trading partners are involved in it. It's just another way that the Quad uh, can reach out. I think the Quad is a very important forum. It's been a great honour uh, to, to come here and to I think it's been a good start uh, to the new government to have this high-level engagement uh, with President Biden, Prime Minister Modi, and I particularly thank Prime Minister Kishida uh, for hosting us here so well in Japan. Thanks very much. Thanks. We've got a meeting. Sorry. Thank you.